Hello, the time has come. You're going to change your Hawk into a Super Hawk with the Mythic 300cc bore kit. I have it inside right now, but I'll put a picture of it right here. Uh, step one is you're going to want to get your gas tank and you're going to want to get your side fenders and your seat off. Well, maybe not your seat, but it just helps. What I'm doing is I'm taking the whole motor out. Step one, shut your gas off. Step two is take this guy off. You don't want it feeding any more gas to your carburetor. Because you're not using gas right now. And a little bit of gas to leak out. It's okay. I'm just going to put it on a paper towel or something. Okay, get your side plastics off. I took the seat off just for fun, too. Now it's the gas tank's turn. So, uh, 10 millimeter. Oh, that is on there. Ugh. Why is it so stuck on there? Oh, there we go. Okay, so your gas tank and your pet cock, the whole assembly is only held on with one bolt to the frame. However, there's a little bit of a catch. Once you actually lift your gas tank up, there's a little wire that leads to your uh, fuel gauge fuel gauge sensor or depth sensor or whatever you want to call it. Uh, make sure you unclip that before you take your uh, fuel tank off. Just don't rip it off. I mean, for me it doesn't really work that great anyways, but I still want it. I still, you know, I don't want to break. Disconnect your spark plug wire. Sprocket cover, eight millimeter. Take all these bolts out. Front sprocket cover is off. Looks like our old safety wire job is still holding up good. So a lot of these steps aren't entirely necessary if you just want to change the head or the jug and the piston, I mean. But I want to take the motor out myself so I can put it on my workbench and I can work on it there. And then I actually plan on painting it afterwards. But um, this whole thing can be done just with the motor sitting right here. You can take the head off, you can take um, the you can take the valve cover off, you can take the head off, and then you can begin your work right there. But mine is just because I have a little bit more plans with it. I want to get it painted and everything. So uh, to take the tension off of your chain, uh, rather than loosening up these back bolts, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take my front sprocket off and just relieve tension off the chain that way. And I'll save this for when I want to put it back on. Now you're going to start taking your exhaust off. Okay. Make sure this gasket comes out. I'm actually going to reuse mine. Alright, now you're going to take your clutch cable off. You're going to remove it from the engine. Watch how easy this is. It's so easy. All you do is push this forward, feed this through. All of a sudden you, I mean, I just find that, that's crazy to me that it's that easy, but yeah, now you're done. Now you're taking your clutch cable assembly off. Just as easy. Take a 10 millimeter or a, a really big Phillips, I guess. That looks like a number four Phillips, but I'm using the socket. It doesn't fit on there perfectly because of these threads, so I just hug it against it. And then once you do, just let it just let it dangle there because it's just going to be stuck to the frame after that disconnect the positive terminal to your starter uh your gauge cluster is off so you should be perfectly fine however if you want to disconnect your battery before you do this then uh just to feel just to feel a little bit safe and that's also perfectly fine disconnect the ground from your battery to your motorcycle starter remembering to hang on to all of that hardware and then, um, and remember it's not gonna come out unless you remove this clip from your wiring harness. Take a 10 millimeter and uh, get started on removing your carburetor. We're just going to remove it as one whole assembly so we can just let it sit there. Remember, all we're trying to do is get the engine out. There's one, then the other one. Okay, carburetor is free now. Um, I would just let it hang there. Uh, there's still going to be a little bit of gas left in the float bowl, so uh, just try not to get any gas on yourself. I'm just going to leave my carburetor sitting right here as it is. Alright, now before you, uh, you have everything else disconnected except for the engine mounts. Before you take the engine mounts off, we're going to drain our oil so that it's easier to work on when we're inside. Also we're doing engine work, so like why not just do an oil change. Let it drain for a bit. Watch 
Wow, I just changed that too. Okay. Snug your drain bolt back on after it's done. Um, after it's done draining, and set it to. I know it's a little bit under torque, but I'd like to avoid an over torque, especially for this. Let's do 14 foot pounds. Looks good to me. Now grab a 12, a 13, and a 14 because that is what most of your um, engine mounting bolts are going to be. This little bunch right here is the hardware to your neutral sending unit. Just disconnect this little sleeve right here and then this guy right here and then this one right here and that'll help in um, removing your motor. Okay, so your last step before you're going to take all of your engine mounting bolts are... There is... There's one engine mount bolt right there that's blocked by this rear brake. Now, I could just use a universal, but I really don't... I just don't want to go through the hassle right now. So I'm just going to disassemble these, uh, this assembly right here. All right, there's going to be a little cotter pin right back here. Take a small pair of pliers. Just yank it out, just like that. And this bolt... Uh, will come free. Take this spring out that attaches to your plunger, that attaches to your uh, brake fluid reservoir, and then uh, we got one more step after that. Okay, so once you have the cotter pin straightened out enough to where you feel like you can pull it out, I'm just going to put some pressure. I'm going to put my palm on the back of it right here. Did it come out? Oh, there we go. That's actually a pretty good size cotter pin for that. Um, I could probably reuse that, <laughs> maybe. But I do have other, other cotter pins, but um, for safety purposes, you should probably get a new cotter pin. There's also gonna be a ring on the back of here, right here. Be sure not to lose any of this hardware, and your brake lever should just slide out, just like that. Which is nice, because now you have, I believe this is a 14, you have perfect amount of space to put a socket on that um, engine mounting nut right there. So now is the part where you can start taking all of your engine mounting bolts off um, and then take your actual engine out. Okay, so now all of the engine mounting bolts and all of the hardware are completely disassembled from the engine. I can tell, because I can rock it back and forth like this. Now let's just gently lift it up. I'm actually not sure how heavy it is. Be careful with it, it's just a baby. It's just a little baby 250. There we go. Ah, what a pain in the butt. Okay. Woo! Okay. Now that our engine's out, Let's go put it on the workbench.